Hey guys, I want to look back and focus on the tanks and armored vehicles within the Fallout universe and their real life inspiration. Although vehicles do not play a huge role in Fallout, there are a surprising amount of them throughout, and for those that have not tried their hand at Fallout Tactics, there are actually a number of drivable vehicles. And for those that have not tried their hand at Fallout Tactics, there are actually a number of drivable vehicles in that game. That said, let's start with some armored vehicles in the Commonwealth. Fallout 4 has an unnamed tank with quite a unique design that can be found in many places in the Commonwealth. By far the most interesting aspect is the dual main cannon, which is really an uncommon design feature. This particular tank is nuclear powered, which is not surprising, but it does lack secondary armament, like a machine gun mounted on top, and it has a double track configuration. Putting all those aspects together, and that means that this tank really does not resemble any known design in our own world. And you know, that's for a good reason too. Since space is really a precious commodity within a tank, and having two cannons that would need to be independently loaded would take up a lot of room within the turret, as well as just making things overly complicated. The closest our modern world has ever gotten to putting two large cannons on a self-propelled vehicle is the 2S35 Colizia SV self-propelled howitzer, which had a design concept that included a double barrel design, but it was never implemented. It is important to note here though, that it is an SPG, or self-propelled gun, and not a tank. Essentially meaning, it's an artillery piece designed for long, indirect fire, as opposed to a tank that's meant to engage in closer armored combat. Going further back into around the World War II era, there's one example of an Australian-built Cruiser Mark III that actually had two 18-pounder cannons. Again, this design feature just never really caught on, and that has a lot to do with the complexity of the task. Not to mention that it gets harder to aim and do really what you need to do as a tank with two different barrels. Forgetting the dual cannons for a second, Nuclear tanks were even more rare to come by in our world, and there was only one real concept that was called the Chrysler TV-8. This thing, I mean, where to even begin? The monstrous turret houses the nuclear reactor, the gun, and the crew, and that's really a drastic departure from the common military tank doctrine and design. The conventional design usually has the crew and the engine, within the body of the tank with the gun and a loader in the turret of the tank. But that huge turret was actually a design feature as it was meant to be watertight, allowing the tank to fjord through water that would otherwise not be able to be crossed by a normal tank. It also goes without saying that nuclear tech is so miniaturized in the Fallout universe that tanks could have a more conventional design with the nuclear reactor engine and probably an electrical engine that gets its electricity from the uh, nuclear power plant in the body of the tank itself. Now really the only potential source of inspiration that I could come across for this would be the Apocalypse tank from the Red Alert and Red Alert 2 games, which has a double cannon and also segmented tracks, just like the tank in Fallout 4. Now there's another armored vehicle littered throughout the Commonwealth, and it is an unnamed armored vehicle that is an infantry fighting vehicle and it is only found in Fallout 4. This vehicle has an area for transporting personnel with a specific message that power armored troops should remain standing. Now taking a look for a second at the armament of this vehicle, they seem to be very large for typical infantry fighting vehicles. They're much closer in size actually to howitzers than actual heavy machine guns as such vehicles are usually armed with. Now, unless such weapons merely have large sleeves or shrouds, it would appear that the vehicles have very large diameter front-mounted guns that can articulate and a large main gun on top. Once again, this design doesn't really reflect any known modern infantry fighting vehicle designs. Similar to infantry fighting vehicles are armored personnel carriers, and an APC can be found in Fallout Tactics, and it has a truly unique design that really reflects the post-apocalypse and gives a really big Mad Max vibe. One variant of this vehicle in the game is even used to carry a large nuclear warhead on the back. 
Now Fallout Tactics also has its own tank. This tank is modeled almost one for one after an M4 Sherman. This Sherman tank, which has its origins in World War II, has obviously seen extensive work and modification for the post-apocalypse. Now, the Sherman was really an interesting choice in this regard. It was a tank, like I said, used extensively by the United States and its allies in World War II, and it went on to serve in many militaries after World War II. Besides seeing some use in the Korean War and some other smaller conflicts after World War II, it was actually used by the Israeli military all the way up to the 1980s, which is an extremely long service life, especially for a tank, after it had been heavily modified and it was known as the Super Sherman. It is pretty incredible that a tank built in the first half of the 20th century was able to be resurrected and modified into fighting condition almost 250 years afterwards. It's reasonable to assume that the Sherman in the Fallout universe also had an extremely long life cycle within the US military, but it was probably used because it's one of the most recognizable US tanks that's ever been produced. That coupled with the Browning 50 caliber machine gun mounted on top, and you have a really American tank. Now Fallout 3 had some very unusual armored vehicles, and it's probably hard to think right now what exactly those vehicles are. Well the first one is the mobile base crawler used by the Enclave in the Broken Steel DLC add-on. This massive hulking beast was the Enclave's main base of operations and had the ability to call satellite launched missiles onto sites remotely. Even though this is quite an impressive bit of machinery, it is mobile, but it's not that mobile. It doesn't move very fast, and just looking at it, it would be heavily limited by terrain. Although I couldn't find any real instances of a mobile base crawler, that we know of, there is a government-built crawler that has seen regular use. It is the NASA Crawler Transporter that transports spacecraft from the assembly building to the launch complex. Although the NASA Crawler is not technically the largest land-based vehicle, it ranks as one of the largest land-based vehicles that can move under its own power. The NASA Crawler Transporter looks a lot like the bottom of the mobile base crawler, with multiple large independent moving tracks. Although the clearance on the mobile base crawler is much more than that on the crawler transporter. The base crawler also proves to be heavily armored as it takes calling a tactical orbital strike right on its own position to effectively destroy and disable it. And even then, the Brotherhood are able to return and salvage a lot of the technology from the base crawler. Moving on to another Fallout 3 DLC, Operation Anchorage premiered a fierce armored offensive vehicle called the Chimera. In the game, this unusual vehicle is described as a modified oil drilling rig with a mounted laser weapon that effectively acted as a Chinese tank. Now it's really important to remember that due to the nature of Operation Anchorage and how many details of the simulation were made up by General Chase, similarly the actual implementation of these types of tanks is really questionable. I have to say it would also be fairly peculiar for an invading force to spend so much time rigging up abandoned mining equipment for fighting duty. Now another thing to consider is the name of the vehicle, the Chimera. It is a Greek mythological name referring to a fire-breathing creature with the head of a lion, the body of a goat, and a serpent's tail. The word Chimera can also actually mean something that is hoped for, but is actually an illusion. So perhaps this lends credence to the thought that they were not actually built or used in Operation Anchorage. So kind of adding up all these oddities, I think it's safe to say that this was something made up by General Chase and not an actual vehicle during the operation. Now here's some just small oddities about it as well. Apparently they are autonomous and the way that the screws turn as shown in game should result in the craft move moving backwards instead of forwards. So funny enough, the large screw-driven craft is not a completely unique design, as a Russian craft called the ZIL-2906 was an experimental vehicle that used a similar screw drive instead of tracks. The reason for this is that these screw drives are thought to be superior even to tracks in extreme off-road conditions. This Russian craft was also amphibious, making it incredibly versatile and ideal for its intended role. 
that role was to be able to locate and retrieve re-entered Soyuz space capsules from difficult Russian terrain. Now, Fallout Tactics had a handful of other armored vehicles, such as an up-armored Humvee, which looks remarkably like the real-world counterpart produced by the U.S. military. It appears to have been heavily modified, using metal slat armor over the windshield. There are large lights and what appears to be a large hose from the front leading to the back, although its use is really unknown. Once again, we have another instance of Fallout using vehicles much older than what was used in 2067 at the outbreak of the war. Now, the most lightly armored vehicle on this entire list originates from Fallout Tactics as well, and it's called the Scouter. It's no mystery then what its role was given its name, and due to this it was given mobility as a priority over armor. As such, it is only lightly armored, all of which has been added by the Brotherhood of Steel when they put the vehicle together. Now, the vehicle itself is similar in design to the Volkswagen Type 128 and 166 Schwimmwagen, although the vehicle in Fallout is fully enclosed to offer greater protection, which makes sense. In fact, its resemblance is more than passing, since the vehicle itself was built using Volkswagen car parts that the Brotherhood could scavenge. Now going through this list, I think it's important to ask a few questions. It's obvious that many of these designs were either inspired or were an almost one-for-one -one representation of real-world vehicles. That in and of itself is not a big deal. It makes sense to draw inspiration from what's around. What is weird though is the fact that they use something like a Sherman tank as the basis for a tank as well as a Humvee for a lightly armored vehicle. A lot of military vehicles, once production has stopped and they've been decommissioned, after a while, it becomes much harder to find really good specimens. Modern historical movies will often go to great lengths to try and get one of the few remaining specimens of a certain vehicle or tank to increase its authenticity. It's no secret that some tanks that are very well known in the historical record like the German Tiger, actually have very few surviving specimens. And yet here in the Fallout universe, there are some vehicles that even by our age and by our standard would be considered very old, like the Sherman or the Volkswagen. Even the Humvee has stopped production with the US military. Were there really no newer vehicles produced up till 2067 when the Great War occurred? Or did a lot of these vehicles have greatly expanded lifetimes within the Fallout universe? Or maybe these are just kind of one-offs, where we got lucky and we found a Sherman tank, or a Humvee, or a really old Volkswagen, and decided that since that's what's there, that's what we're going to use. It's really hard to say, but it's definitely something to think about. And that's actually it for this video. Again, Fallout's a little light on its vehicles, especially armored vehicles. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, learned a thing or two, and I hope to see you guys on my next video.